Okay, relations part two, we talk about uh, how to write equations from tables and some other little mix and max as well. When I say tables, I mean looking at a table of values, you get some data, and then from that, can we come up with some kind of equation that describes the pattern that we're seeing in the relation? So we take a look at this first example here. Let's say there's a big, huge um, farm or a big, huge chunk of land, and a landscaper uh, wants to make, you know, little separate garden plots for people to come and buy, I guess, and uh, grow stuff in this garden. And the way he makes these little garden plots is he uses boards. So if someone wants to buy like a solo, single, one garden plot, the way the landscaper does this, he puts just four boards, one, two, three, four, make them a little square, boom, it's done. Um, if he wants two plots back to back, he has to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plots, uh, sorry, seven boards to make two plots back to back because we're reusing that board in the middle. And here for three pl plots, you have to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boards. Um, we're kind of doubling up on the boards in the middle. And this can go on and on and on from one, two, three plots to four, five, six, all the way to some people might want hundreds of different plots. So this is a relation. It's a relation connecting an input value and an output value. What is the input? The input value is the number of plots because remember the input is the thing that determines the output. We figure out how many plots there are. The number of plots tell us how many boards we're going to need. Okay? So plots are input. Whoops, plots. And the output would be the number of boards. Now, a little side thing here, input and output. In science, they're this pretty much the same thing when we're talking when we're talking about graphing in science. The input is like the independent variable. And the output is like the dependent variable. And just like in science, the independent variable or the input are always on the x-axis and the output or the dependent variable are always on the y-axis. Okay, because again another way to think of it, the plots are independent and the boards depend on the number of plots. The number of boards that we use depend on the number of plots, not the other way around. So, just a little background there. Now, based on that, let's make a table of values. Make a table of values based on what we just, um, the pattern that we just saw here. So, plots, one, two, three, and how many boards go in each plot. Now, the input, the plots, also called the independent variable, goes on the x-axis, and in a table, they usually go on the first column, the left column. So let's put plots here. Plots, let's call them P for plots, and B for boards over here. They are the output or dependent variable, and they go on the y-axis, and then that usually goes into the second column on the right, our right facing the paper. Okay, so one plot, needs four boards, right? Looking up here, one plot needed one, two, three, four boards. Two plots needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two plots needed seven boards. Two plots needed seven boards. And three plots needed 10 boards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, you can continue this. You can predict, probably, what's four plots gonna need? Well, what are we going up by in each case? We're going up by a set, consistent, constant number. We're going up by three in each case. So the next one's also going to go up by three. Thirteen boards are going to be needed for uh, when we have one plot. Okay. Now, the plots are going up by one in this data, and the boards are going up by three. So based on that, we should be able to make an equation. Now an equation is handy because 
Um, what if I wanted to figure out how many boards are needed for 700 plots? I could, I guess, if I wanted to, just kept on going with this table and go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, da, 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 700, and add, increase the thing by 3 each time to figure out how many boards we're going to have. But by making an equation, I can do that really easily, figure that out really easily. To make the equation, you just have to see the connection between plots and boards. And when you write an equation, the output goes first. Just like when you wrote an equation um, when, you write, when you were doing like x's and y's, the y went first, y equals something. Um, so the dependent variable, the output, to figure out how many boards we need, boards, we have to do something to the number of plots. Well, what connection do you see between boards and plots? What do you have to do to this number to get that number? And you might think, add 3. Well, that works for that one, but does it work for this one? 1 plus 3 is 4, but 2 plus 3 is not 7. So adding 3 is not going to work. Here's a little trick. If you know what the number is, that the uh, constant number that we're going up by each case, in this case it was 3, going up by 3, going up by, going up by 3, that's the number you're going to multiply the input or the independent variable by. And that's what I suggest you do. So you see what the uh, outputs are going up by and multiply that by your inputs. So 3 times the plots. Does that give us the answer? Let's try that. If we put 1 into here, we get 3 times 1, which is 3. Does that give us our answer? No. We're short by 1. Let's try it again. If you put two plots into our little mini equation, 2 times 3 is 6. Does that give us what we need? No. We're again short by 1. We need 7. And really quickly, 3 times 3 is 9. We're short by 1, 10. So first, the first thing you would do is <clears throat> multiply the independent variable, or the input, by how much the output increases by. Increases or decreases. I should just say changes by. And then after you've done that, which we did here, then you have to make an adjustment. You have to adjust the equation so that it works. For all the data. Okay? So um, each time we multiplied the plots by 3, we were short by 1 in each case to get the number of boards. So what do you think we have to do to make this equation work? Multiply by 3, because we're short 1 each time, we need to compensate by adding 1 each time. So to get the number of boards, you take the number of plots, times it by 3, and increase it by 1. Let's see if it works. If we take one board, 1 into here, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. It works. Let's try it with two plots. Two, we sub into here. Three times two is six, plus one, seven. It works. Three times three, nine, plus one, ten. And go on and on and on. This is our equation that will work all the time. Okay, let's use this equation. Um, actually, before we do that, let's graph this really quickly. Okay, so, just like you learned about how to plot coordinates, there's a first coordinate here. One plot, four boards. Now remember, the first column is like your x-axis. So we can call on our graph here, call the x-axis, call them plots for p. And the b is on our y-axis spot, or our output spot, so we can call our y-axis b for boards. And let's plot the points. One, four. One on the plots, one on the plots, four on the boards. 2 on the plot, 7 on the boards. 2 on the plots, 7 on the boards. Okay? And that's going to stop here. 3 in the plots, 10 boards. 
three plots, ten boards. Okay, now, in the last video, we I just said, connect the dots with one big strong line and put arrows at the end, like this. I would make you do that, right? I used a ruler or a fancy, the fancy line thing. But here's the question. Do we really need to connect the dots in this line? We need to connect the dots here to make a line. Um, well, when you connect the line, what you're saying is that you can have any numbers, whole numbers or even decimal numbers possible with the data. Now we're talking plots and boards. And we're connecting all the dots. We're saying that you can have like, here's one, you can have like 0.5, which is half, half a plot. Half a plot would be, read off the line there, that's three, three and a half boards. Can you have that? Can you have half a plot or half a board? Or can you have like, let's just say 2.1, 2.1 plots giving you like 7.1 boards? Can that happen? No, you can't. You can't get a partial uh, board or a partial plot. Okay, so because of that, we say that this data is discrete. Discrete data is where you can only have whole numbers of the answers here. And because of that, you do not connect the dots. So the data would just stay like that. When you have discrete data, that means you can only have whole number data, and that means you don't you don't connect the dots. What we've been doing in previous videos is looking at continuous data where you can have decimal numbers. Um, like x could be 1.4 and y could be 6.3, that kind of thing. In that case, you do connect the line, and sometimes it makes a sense. Like, say, time. You know, you can have 5.4 seconds. You could travel 8.3 kilometers. You can do that. That's continuous data. Discrete data is where you can only have whole number answers. And so in that case, you don't connect the dots. Continuous, you do connect the dots. Okay, so we don't connect the dots. That's it. We're done. Okay, let's take a look at this. Um, figure one, there's three different figures and they can go on and on and on. And uh, there's numbers of stars. The stars are arranged like this. So figure one has one star. Figure two has two in the base and then one at the top there making a pyramid. Figure three, three in the base and then um, two more stars fit there. Figure four would look something like this. Okay, it goes on and on and on. Okay, so what is the input here? The input and what is the output? What are our variables here? What are changing? Well, the figures are changing. Figure numbers, figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four. So the figures are changing. Figure numbers. And what else is changing? The numbers of stars. Okay, now which depends on which? Who's the input, who's the output? Does the figure number depend on the stars or does the stars depend on the, on the figures? Um, the figure number is the one that's the independent variable here. It, so your figure number is the input. Once we know what the figure number is, according to this pattern, we can figure out the number of stars. So the number of stars would be our output. Let's make a table of values. The input goes off, goes first, so your figure number, big number, and then the output goes here, so it's the number of stars. If we're going to use letters for figure number, figure number would be, let's say, an F, and number of stars, let's call it S for stars. Okay, figure number one had one star, right? Figure number two had three stars. And figure number three had five stars. Figure three had five stars. Let's just stop there. 
right? Let's see the data. What is it going up by? Is it going up by a constant number? Yes, it is. These are going up by ones. And the stars are going up by twos. Going up by twos. So this next one, obviously, would be figure number four would have, because they're going up by twos, five plus two is seven. And again, if you wanted to, you could do this whole thing up to a thousand different figure number 1,000 and figure out how many stars it would be by using this little pattern. Or, the smart way would be to write an equation. What are we doing to, to get the number of stars, to get the number of stars, that's the output, to get our output, what are we doing to the input in each case? What are we doing to the figure number? Like I said, to figure that out, you see what we're going up by, remember these steps that I wrote down right here? You multiply the input value by how much the output changes, or goes up or down by, and then adjust to see if it works for all the data. Okay, so we're going up by twos. So we say that we're going to have to figure out the number of stars. We multiply our figure number by two because we're going up by twos. Above, we were going up by threes. Let's see if this works. If we take figure number and multiply it by two, we should get our stars. Figure number is 1. Put a 1 in here. 2 times 1 is 2. Does that give us the number of stars? No, it only gives us 1. So we're off. Let's use 2. 2 into here. 2 times 2 is 4. Does that give us the answer? No. We're over by 1. We we're over by 1 here. We we're over by 1 here. For the next one, 3. 3 times 2 is 6. No, we're over by 1. So now we have to adjust. Obviously, two times the figure number is not right. We have to make a little tweaking. Um, we kept on getting over by one, so we need to subtract this by one to make it work. And you would now test it out. Does this work? Two times one, we put the one into here. Two times one is two, minus one is one. Let's put a two into here. Two times two is four, minus one is three. That's correct. Trust me, it works. So this is our equation that works. Okay, now, based on this equation, we can then answer questions like this. How many stars will there be in figure number 12? We use the equation. To figure out how many stars there's going to be, we sub in 12 into our figure number. So 2 times 12, whatever you're subbing in, put in brackets. We get our stars. 2 times 12 is 24, minus 1. The number of stars would be 23. Okay, you can use the equation, or yeah, if you wanted to, you could have just went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and just up by 2, up by 2, up by 2. Um, even for 12, you probably could have done that. But like, what if you have, you know, 187, figure 187? It's much easier to use the equation to figure this out than just by using the table and just going up by 2. If we were to graph it, um, 1, 1. So figures go on the x axis. Stars go on the y-axis. First column, inputs go on the x-axis. So stars here. Sorry, other way around. The input are your figures, and stars go there. So according to our data, one and one. One and one. Next, two and three. Two, three. Next, three in the figures, five in the stars. Three in the figures, five in the stars. There we are. Now, question is, do we connect the dots? Is this discrete data or continuous data? Discrete data is when you cannot have halves or decimals. You can only have whole numbers of the data. Let's look at this data. Figures and stars. Could I have figure 2.6? Well, could I have nine point, I don't know, seven stars? No. I, it can only have whole number figures, and I can only have whole number stars. So because of that, I don't connect the dots. This is discrete data, so I don't connect the dots. So there's no line. I don't have to connect it, and there's the graph right there. It's done. Okay. Here we go. Student council dance. Student council wants to make money. They're raising money for, um, let's say, uh, a well in, in, in Africa, a school in Africa. They want to um, build a school, and so they're trying to do something here, raise some money by having a dance. 
okay? They decide that they want to charge $4 per student to attend the dance. That's how they're going to make the money. But their costs come in for renting the hall, music, whatever, food and stuff like that, is $200. So they want to know is, what, how much do they need to break even? What is their profit going to be? So they make, they figure all the situations out by doing a little graph situation here. What is the input? What is the output? Well, what we want to find out in the end is our profit. So profit is your output or your dependent variable. And it depends on how many students attend. So students are your input. Let's call them S for students, P for profit. All right, well, an equation. For a profit, you have to make more than the cost. The costs are $200. So we have to overcome this $200 with a certain number of students attending. Okay, so um, our output is profit, so P equals, what do we have to do to students? Now usually you could have a table here, and you can do the table, I did it backwards here, just based on the sentence, can we figure out an equation? Well, it's saying here we charge them $4 per student. So for every student, it costs $4. Oh, sorry, they, they, they earn $4 per student coming in. So one student will be $4, two students will be $8, so we multiply our students by 4. But costs, they chip into our profit. So we whatever money we make from students, we have to subtract that. We have to subtract $200 from that because that's how much we're, we're spending. So the equation would be, uh, to get the profit, $4 times each student minus the $200 we need to spend for costs. So that's our equation. Using that equation, we can fill in this table. If zero students attend, what's our profit going to be? Well, let's do this. For zero students, profit would be 4 times number of students being 0 minus 200. And 4 times 0 is 0, minus 200. Our profit will be, well, what's 0 minus 200? Minus 200. So we'd lose $200, or they'd lose $200 if no one attended. Makes sense, right? No one comes in. How much, how they make money? They still got to pay for uh, the music and hall rental. All right, let's see what happens if 50 students attend. If 50 students attend, we sub in 50 here instead. 4 times 50 is 200. 200 minus 200 is 0. So in this case, if 200 students attend, the profit is 0. At least you break even, but no sense in that. Now let's see what happens if 100 students attend. If 100 students attend, I think you know where this is going. 4 times 100 is 400. 400 minus 200 then is $200. So the profit would be $200. Now, if you're going to graph this, you might be thinking, oh, if you only have a, well, I only have a graph that goes up to 10s. Change it around, make it work. Our profit, which is on our y-axis, and our students, which is on our x-axis. Let's take a look at our data here. Um, profit, we have to have on our graph that fit on a low end 200 on a high end positive 200. Why don't we just take each one of these numbers? So I want 200 to be here. Let's time each on each of these numbers by 20. If you times this by 20, it'll give you 200. And this by 20, that's 160. So let's just do that. That'll be Come on. So we times everything uh, by 20. 2 times 20 is 40. 80. 
120. So don't be a slave to the numbers you think, oh, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Just uh, change the numbers here. So 40, 80, 120, 160, negative 200. Um, and then what about our students? We want our high number to be 100. So we want this to be 100. Let's times all these by 10. Make this 20, make this 40, 60, 80, 100. And the same thing that way. 20, 40, 60. As long as they're going up by the same number each time, it's fine. Okay, let's graph this. Zero students, negative $200 profit. Zero students, negative $200 profit. There's our first point right there. Make it show up nicely. Um, and then 50 students, $0 profit. So 50 on the students, 50, that's uh, 30, 40, 50 right there. Zero on the profit, well that's right here, zero. So there's our dot there. 100 students, $200 profit. So at 100 students, we have a $200 profit. 100 students right here, S for students, positive 100 students, positive. Now, there's our dots. Do we connect them? Is this discrete or continuous data? Can you have decimals of students? And can you have decimals of profit? Well, yes and no. Profit you can have like $10.40 or 300 and 300.5 or $300.50, but you can't have halves of students. You have to have whole numbers of students. So it is discrete data, which means we do not connect the dots. We leave it like that. So how much are needed to make a profit? Well, we figured out <coughs> that at this point, at 50 students, we break even. So anything greater than 50, not equal to, but greater than 50, getting back to our linear relation stuff here. Um, so when we have the students greater than 50, we make a profit. Okay, so how many students do we need to make a profit? So anything that's where the students are greater than 50, you're making money. Okay. Now that you could have figured out with the graph by looking at the graph to read that. There's 50, makes zero. We want to get anything above that. So 50, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, all the way up. Anything past 50 gives us a profit. Anything less than 50, start losing money. Or you could have subbed it into the equation to figure that out. Lots of ways to do it. Anyways, here's your skill testing question. Uh, looking at this toothpick pattern, which will go on forever, figure numbers, numbers of toothpicks, or the input and output. Make a table of values for this, write an equation for it, graph it, tell me if the data should be discrete or continuous, and using either the graph, the table, or the equation, figure out how many toothpicks would be would there be in figure 50 according to this pattern. Okay, long video I know, um, but yeah, sorry. What are you gonna do? Thanks. Bye.